Hello everyone, I'm very happy today to show you our first release of MMT, our brand new machine translation technology. So MT is an open source technology developed uh, by four different partners uh, coming from the research and industry. So within the partners you have translated, that is my company, um, uh, FBK and University of Edinburgh that are the uh, among the founders of Moses, the current state-of-the-art in machine translation, and TAUS, an industry association with a strong focus on data. So what we plan to do with MMT is create a new system that is overcoming some of the limitation of current MT technology. So for example, we want to create an MT that is able to learn uh, incrementally so as you add data, so that you don't have, as soon as you have more data, you may have to retrain an engine, um, that uh, adapt to context in real time. And uh, so that if you have different domains, you actually don't need to create separate engine for different domains and try to guess which one is good for what. Just throw the data in, divided by the TMs or domains you have. Basically, the system will We'll, we'll, we'll try to identify your source content, what it looks more similar to, and weigh the data so that it will actually perform a translation that is more close to that content. Um, also, we plan to have a system that is very easy to install and deploy, and it's very scalable, so that if you have, if you have to manage a, a lot of translation requests per second or high reliability of your system, actually you can run it in the cluster of machine uh, without too much effort. So today we're showing you uh, release 0 0.11. These, what I, I've been describing, are actually the long-term goal. Today, we're this, the first release is including some of these features, and I want to show you what we have for you. So uh, if you go on, on GitHub, our repository, uh, you will find uh, that now it's private, but by the time you see the video, we will release it public. And um, if you go on releases here, you will find the 0.11 to download. Okay, it's actually the binary files for Ubuntu 14.04. So this first release actually only works on Ubuntu, and we tested on Ubuntu 14.04, uh, that I strongly recommend you use if you want to try it out. And uh, luckily, this is also uh, the default uh, image in Amazon. So if you want to create a virtual machine, it should be pretty easy. Um, so let's go to install and see what we have to do. So some hardware requirements, blah, 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 and okay. So first thing we need to do is actually install Java. So I already did this machine. You can copy and paste this. Uh, MMT requires Java 8. You can do pretty straightforward. I will now do it again now. So you download the, the, the binaries, and actually I will do it from here. Okay, and what I'm doing also is untar this archive. Done. I should have an MMT folder here. Here, here it is. Perfect. Okay, looks like everything is working. And uh, let's go to the readme then. Okay, so blah, 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 create an engine, okay. So let's create an engine. Uh, the syntax, MT create, source language, target language, and the training directory. What do we have in the training directory here? Yeah, actually, a bunch of files divided by domain, language code here. So actually, you can just into the folder, you can just put your corpus, the corpus, the different corpus you have. You don't have to put them together. Uh, actually, it's better to leave them separate because I will tell you what MMT does in a second. So copy and paste these and try. And let's see what happens. So 
One of the things, good things I think we did in MMT is that we took all the good technology that was out there and uh, embedded it into a single easy to use uh, technology. And for example, in tokenization, we currently support 42 languages. So we took good tokenizer all around and we created a Java application that is actually using all those tokenizers um, so that you don't need to install different tokenizer for different languages. It comes out with 42 languages supported already. So I did, I, I did create my engine. It was a very small amount of data. It's just 2000 sentences. Uh, so let's start the engine. When you start the engine, what it does, it will provide you a REST API to query the engine. So it comes straightforward also with a way to deploy your, your engine on the fly. There's nothing to do anymore. So let's see how it looks like. If I take this, we'll do the cool request, and it's saying the translation is Mondo. What we provided, what we asked it was the translation of query equal world, and we provide a context called a computer. Why are we providing context? That's the secret sauce behind um, MMT. And I will show you, so this is a very small engine. Let me stop this one. Let me show you what happened with a, with a better, a little bigger engine. Um, so let me take uh, this one, and I'm putting this engine into the engine folder and then I'm starting that as an engine that I trained uh, yesterday MMT start engine name a I am okay so I started the engine now what I want to show you is this oops If I ask the translation of an ambiguous word, so this engine is trained with Europal data, SAM, and two computer science TM from Microsoft and IBM, I'm translating the word party. And as a context, I provide I'm talking about computer. So what context is? It's just the uh, sentences that are surrounding the word you're translating. So when you're translating a document, obviously is a sequence, so you can provide the full document as context or just a few sentences before. So if I do translate party, it will tell me that this is a festa, which is in Italian means birthday party, okay? But if I do talk about, uh, we approve the law, then we're talking about politics and in politics, and talk about party, you're talking probably about partido. So that's a very easy example in how MMT is working. And uh, you can see from the API, you're getting the scores. These are actually this similarity between the context you provided and the different corpuses that you provided in, in the training folder. Um, so a few things I want to um, mention. How do we do that? So, and um, it's not only good because it, it uh, recognizes context, this also gives another advantage. Uh, training is no more training, actually. The time it takes to create an engine in MT is almost the amount of time it, it needs to import data, just import data. So, like one billion words uh, is only about uh, 15, 10, 15 hours of data importing which is similar to the time it takes MySQL to import the same amount of data. While we do that, actually we're storing the information into something called suffix arrays. And when we ask for a translation and provide a context, then we're creating a phrase table dynamically by weighting the data based on the similarity of context. So if this looks like more uh, political science, then I will get 10 times more data from Europarm to create the phrase table. This will affect the translation of the word. So, uh, thus you get to benefit much faster training and capability to adapting. So the other thing we wanted to solve with this release was about the capability of scaling 
your translation request across multiple machines. So imagine you have, a, you have another bunch of servers, you log in into the second one, and you want to have the same engine there. The only thing you have to do is this. So imagine I'm on the second server, and you provide a master address. So you see here. So you join master, and then you provide a password, a user and password, and actually the, the IP address of the master. What it does on the, on the slave, after you install an MMT, obviously, it will take the model from the master and sync it to the slave. And every time there is a translation request coming to the master, then those requests are load balanced across all the different instances. If you change the model in the master, it will sync again the model on the slave. If a slave goes down, it gets removed from the pool by the master. So of this functionality, actually, uh, load balancing is implemented in 0 0.11, failover or not. So it means that if an engine goes away, I mean, uh, the master is not able to, to remove it from the pool yet, but this will be available in, in, in 0 0.12, so the next release. Um, this is all I wanted to show you for this, and uh, but um, and I hope you enjoyed. So what's next for us is that we're working. Uh, we currently support forty-two languages. We're working on supporting seventy languages. This release here only works in Ubuntu, and we're working to make it completely cross-platform so that it can actually work on, on different environments. Um, we're also uh, well, the main thing we have to do is that I mentioned before we want to create a machine translation that is learns incrementally. So you understand that based on the suffix array structure that we created, this is is feasible, and uh, but we need to, we need still to to finalize the implementation of this, and uh, so this will come this year later this year. Um, and uh, that's all. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, if you want to contribute, uh, you can do it two ways. Go on GitHub, get get our code, test it, break it, and post uh, on um, GitHub your finding. Uh, also, if you want to participate to improve the system, do a pull request, add your features, and we would love to have your contribution. Thank you so much. Bye.